Guys, I gotta be honest with you. I suck at 3D modeling, even though it was the thing that got me into 3D in the first place. A few weeks ago, I tried to live stream the creation of a Lamborghini and failed miserably. Man, it was a crash and burn. So what I did was immediately start watching tutorials on 3D modeling, and I learned so much. I know. Cinema 4D. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my creative process for a fountain pen, headphones, a knife, and a water bottle. So by the end of this breakdown, you guys can create photo reel replicas of your favorite items. Let's jump in. Extra is the sponsor of today's video. Stick with me to the end to figure out how you guys can get 20% off your extra wallet. Now the water bottle was the easiest, so this will be level one for us. Now for all these objects, I decided to use a subdivision modeling technique. The basic idea behind this modeling method is to model a super low poly version of your object then throw it into a subdivision modifier. It's a standard technique that's used across all 3D programs. Blender gang, I'm talking to you guys. To keep our geometry as clean as possible, we wanna keep things in quads, meaning all of our geometry should just be four-sided. Triangles are evil and end guns are basically the devil. And my last note on subdivision modeling is to use edge loops to sharpen edges and corners. If you can model the low poly version of your object and use your edge loops to sharpen those corners and edges, then you guys are set for success. The last thing I would wish on my arch nemesis is for them to be surprised by the sound of a dropping hydro flask. But that's how you get these dents on the water bottle, right? So all I'm doing is pushing these points in in polygon mode to get you that dented look. And texturing for all of these objects are actually pretty simple. I'm using a glossy material with surface imperfections in the roughness channel. The gradient node is used to clamp the black and white values to specific shades of gray that give me the right look. And sometimes I'll throw an imperfection in the specular channel to say black areas are reflective, white areas are not, and I'll use that gradient node again to work that look in. For the bump channel, I like to throw in a bit of small scale noise to get a bit of texture on the surface. The bump and normal channels are great ways to get micro detail without relying on your poly count. It makes things a little less computer intensive. And moving on to the fountain pen. So back in the early 2010s, I used to have a manager. He gifted me what has become one of my favorite pens. It's a Lamy fountain pen. I've had many since then, but I think this is the perfect thing to model and texture for level two. The only reason I was able to model this stuff so accurately is because I used reference. If you have the actual object, go ahead and get it because that's gonna be the best way to go. The second best thing to do is go to Google and download some high res reference images and lay them out in a program called Pure Ref. This program changed it all for me. I use it to compile reference images and mood boards. Once you guys have your reference, you can start modeling. The grip of this pen, as well as the nib, were the most difficult points of this thing to model. Don't stop until you guys get the likeness of the object you're trying to model. Keep going at it, I promise you guys will feel very fulfilled, as I did when I completed this model. A pro tip that helped me along the creation process of all of these objects was how to cut a circle out of a square. So grab all your points, scale them up, and from here you can cut a hole or extrude for the perfect circle. Don't forget your edge loops though because they're gonna keep your geometry sharp. I use this technique to get this oval window to the ink well. And be sure to adjust the scale of your bump texture to match the distance at which you're viewing your object. Sometimes it's the best move to go for what looks the nicest versus what is actually accurate. And moving on to item number three, bone conduction headphones. These things are the best. I've never had a single item make such a difference. They work by vibrating the bones in your skull. Modeling these headphones was a big challenge for me. It took an entire four hour live stream to complete these things, which is why they're landing in our level three spot. So like with all of these objects, they're getting more difficult at this point, but I really had to think about how I modeled this. To me, the earbud portion looked like stretched cylinders and the bulky parts look like cubes. So I start breaking this down into primitives, really focusing on the spacing between each object. Once I get the spacing right between these two pieces, I'll select both objects, right click and select connect objects plus delete. This combines these two pieces into one so we can bridge the gap and then start building out this neck piece. Don't waste your time modeling stuff. You guys don't need to model. Use symmetry modifiers when possible. You got symmetrical stuff. Blender has this too. You guys, it doesn't matter what program you're using. These are very basic things that most 3D programs have. For textures, again, I'm just using a surface imperfection in the roughness channel. And remember that the gradient node controls the intensity of your roughness. So don't forget to use it so you can match your reference as close as possible. And finally, we have the most difficult of the four models for me, 
this pocket knife. Combining everything we've learned so far, I am using reference, symmetry, subdivision modeling, and surface imperfections controlled with gradients to get my final object. My advice on something like this is to start with a single polygon and build out the shape of this flat first, okay? This way we can most efficiently adjust the basic shape of this thing before we start building it out. Start with the simple stuff and then go from there. One thing that really helped me out with this model right here was saving iterations. It's a way to save past versions of your projects. I pulled from an early save file after I screwed up one of the later iterations. Now as far as textures go, the only thing that's new here is this type of metal. It's different from your standard chrome material in the sense that it streaks the reflections. You'll see this on cooking ware, elevator doors, or fridges. It's called anisotropic metal and can only be accessed in Octane if you change the BRDF model to something other than Octane. Crank the anisotropy up and give it a bit of roughness. If you still don't see those streaks, you can plug in a scaled down octane noise into the bump channel. Now from this point, it all comes down to the lighting. We can easily just throw a random HDRI and render our scene, but why not use some strategically placed lights to really make these models shine and look their best? Now what I'm doing to get this look is combining a number of soft lights with an HDRI. And remember, generally the bigger the light, the softer the shadows. This aperture light right here is huge. The reason you're getting these nice soft shadows on here is because we're looking at a giant softbox. This is really where we get to have fun. The modeling and stuff, all the hard work, that's done. Now we get to art direct it and really let our object shine. And finally, I'm using depth of field to make my object seem a bit more lifelike. I'm also combining that with a bit of color correction and some bloom to make things a little bit nicer. So if you guys have been following my channel over the last year, you guys know that we do weekly challenges. So for this week, I challenge you guys to pick one item and model that item, all right? Give it some texture, light it, make it look really nice. And on next week's live stream, I will critique the five best renders and give them my surface imperfection pack and all four of these models that you just saw to break down and use for whatever you all want. So all you guys have to do is join the Discord, the link's in the description, read the weekly challenge, and post under submissions by Saturday at 9 a.m. Today's sponsor is Exter, the world's largest smart wallet brand. They design innovative solutions for the way you guys carry your everyday items, just like this. What makes these wallets awesome is the solar-powered tracking card that you can ping with your phone, and vice versa if you ever lose your phone. So lucky for me, I have one of these in my extra wallet. Which is really slick by the way. It's much slimmer than your traditional George wallet while still offering a ton of space to work with. The quick access feature is my favorite. It makes it feel like James Bond when you bust out your ID. So click the link in the description to get 20% off your extra wallet and never lose the stuff that's important to you ever again. Pretty soon here, I'm going to announce a way that you guys can download all my project files and all of my assets and packs. So definitely subscribe for that. I really hope you guys learned something. I know I sure did. So get out there and start that weekly challenge. I hope to see your renders next week. Peace guys.